Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Compass Wednesday today on the 1st of December. Our speaker is uh, Francisco Javier Veron Vera of the uh, ATM department here at Rasmus. He is a research professor here. And I asked him what he wants me to say for the introduction. And he said there was not much more, it's just that he is a research professor and that he will give us an update on the presentation he already gave a few months ago at the beginning of March. So that's all I have to say at the beginning. Please take it over and share your screen. Okay, if you allow me to, to click in here. And it doesn't work. Why doesn't work? Screen sharing has failed to start. Please try again later. When? It should work. I didn't change anything mm -hmm. here. Okay, full screen. No. Yes, now it works. And it works? Okay. So let me start these 30 minutes to see where I am before I... Uh, the audience that I have in there. Okay, so thank you guys for attending. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a continuation of, I, of the talk that I gave um, in, in March. Uh, this is... Uh, the type of uh, research or scientific research that is not actually guided by any uh, uh, defined goals or, or strategic goals. It's just something that happened and that I got involved in and, uh, and it led to some developments that eventually found some uh, application, some concrete application. So I'm going to be talking about uh, stuff related to these uh, three papers that appeared this year in Physical Fluids and the Revista Mexicana de Física. For those from Mexico that are attending, they will always, we also publish in there. And, uh, uh, and it's related to work that uh, my advisor at CICESE uh, did during the 90s, Pedro Ripa. And it's motivated actually by work done by Darrell Holm on the subject recently, I learned about that. So I got involved in this. Uh, important player in, in the whole game here is Phil Morrison uh, from Texas in development of, of a theory uh, that I'm gonna be discussing. And, and the first uh, reference is the concrete application that I'm talking about. This thing that I'm gonna be uh, telling you about started in the fantastic Aspen Center for Physics uh, a workshop that I, that I attended in, 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 in June. Uh, fantastic place, two weeks of uh, just thinking these things. Uh, and I had a, the, the, uh, the, the uh, opportunity to meet uh, uh, at last Phil Morrison that I'm doing uh, Boston brackets with Phil Morrison and Blackboard. It was the type of thing that we've been doing in, the, in, in that workshop. And it's precisely because of this classroom brackets that I got actually involved in, in, in doing a PhD in, in, in physical oceanography, believe it or not. I see Julio also connecting, that's glad to see him. Uh, and I also want to thank, uh, want to thank um, uh, uh, Daryl Holm, that I've been exchanging emails with him for a number of, of, of years already and I met him recently, soon to be zooming lately to, and he's an important, you know, uh, uh, actor in the things that I'm gonna be talking about today. Okay, acronyms, uh, I don't need a, maybe I don't need to go, I mean, well, yeah, but this is a presentation that I gave in a, in a non-expert um, uh, audience, but it's important to fix some notations. SW is shallow water, P, and you know what shallow water equations mean, these primitive equations, uh, QG, quasi geostrophy, HLs, I mean homogeneous layer. So a shallow water model will be a homogeneous layer primitive equation model, HLPE. 
and IL is going to be in homogeneous layer. So primitive equations, I mean, has full three-dimensional uh, variation. Uh, it can be referred to as an ILP or IL infinity P. By infinity, I mean the amount of vertical variation in the uh, in uh, of the fields allowed. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to start with a with a little picture of nature. Uh, that uh, this is not actually nothing to be surprised about, but it's something that is commonly observing uh, now in, in um, satellite oceanography, small scales that develop uh, uh, around larger scales, and I'm referring to these uh, Kelvin Helmholtz like uh, uh, structures around the, in, in this uh, uh, picture of the ocean somewhere in, 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 in somewhere in the ocean. And I want you to have that in mind and compare that to this simulation that I run uh, is the nonlinear evolution of a, of a Berkeley jet. Uh, I know the filamentation developed there, but it's intriguing by two by two by two reasons. Is because the model is is a shallow water like it is two dimensional, has only one layer, and it's also a quasi geostrophic simulation, and you expect to see this type of uh, structures in, in more sophisticated uh, simulations of uh, primitive equations um, uh, and in, in three dimensions. So this is uh, uh, interesting. And, and the type of model that I'm using is, uh, is, uh, is an approximation to the full three-dimensional primitive equation model on the left. It's a vertical average of the variables. And uh, so, uh, what what has, uh, in addition to this, just a shallow water model, it, it can accommodate thermodynamic processes. And that is why I'm talking about thermal dynamics, or this model has been called a thermal uh, shallow water model. Uh, it has an implicit vertical shear uh, uh, through the uh, thermal wind balance that dominates at low frequencies. So the goal here is to extend the IL zero that was the subject of the of the talk that I gave in in, in March and take the chance to clarify the geometric structure of of, of of the system. Okay, the plan is I'm gonna go over a little bit of the history of IL zero. Zero means no vertical variation of a density in the vertical. Okay. And uh, recent developments uh, uh, based on the IL zero. Uh, that my that motivates my my interest in in, in IL modeling, uh, the model extension, the geometry, um, and some aspects uh, or interpretation of the model as a family of shallow water systems with thermodynamics. Uh, I'm going to go. I mean, this is an important point. Actually, perhaps a motivation for getting into this is the uh, they were going to show there is a special case of a of a model that was uh, discussed by Morrison and Greeny in 1980. Uh, when I discuss the effects of the stratification in this simulation. So I'm gonna show, uh, hopefully I'm gonna get to the point to show this application to sargassum inundation in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, summary outlook. Uh, okay, the history, the history. Uh, so I was able to drag down the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the IL zero to a work by Jim O'Brien in the 60s. So apparently he introduced the idea of, of vertically averaging the pressure gradient in the, uh, in the IL infinity. Uh, the model was used uh, extensively during the 80s and 90s, uh, in particularly in, in applications related to equatorial dynamics by people like Schoff, Kane, McCrary, and others. Pedro Ripa got attracted and work it out the, uh, the geometric structure, the Hamiltonian structure of a model and apply it in, in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, they, in the in Gulf of California, uh, I'm sorry. And he got students uh, and, 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 and colleagues working on, on, on the subject uh, at that time. Emilio Beyer was his student and he applied the model uh, to understand the dynamics of the uh, Gulf of California. Then, for some time, the idea was 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 uh, abandoned mainly because of the uh, increase in computational power. That, that I mean, the whole point of of of, of this uh, IL zero modeling is its simplicity. 
Uh, so there's more emphasis, uh, uh, regretfully, to reproduce observation rather than um, uh, understanding what's going on in nature. Paul Deller came in the 60s, in the 60s, in 2000, and showed that certain, I mean, the, uh, the, the uh, structure of a model, um, and uh, because of the involvement of Pedro Ripa in, 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 the, in the subject, he called the model Ripa's model. And in the, um, in the uh, mathematicians that deal with uh, uh, study PDEs and, and solutions, they refer to the model as, as Ripa's model now. Um, more recently, Paul Baylor and, and students and postdocs apply the model to explain dynamics in, the, uh, in Jupiter with a layer, the formation of the jets. Uh, more recently, uh, Jorge Zavala and, and uh, postdoc student applied it to the Gulf of Mexico. Dal Holm used the model to develop a framework for the study of, uh, uh, of quantification of uncertainty and, and parameterization sub mesoscale, these small scales. And Bellerman Zeitlin, Zeitlin and, and, and colleagues have been using the model uh, extensively lately. Uh, in, in, in applications on, on, on troposphere dynamics, tropical cyclone ident ident uh, and intensification. So this strong comeback of EI0 motivates my interest in, in, in these things. So the thing goes like this, it's gonna be a little heavy, but I'm gonna try to highlight only the, uh, mainly, ma the main points in here. So I need to fix some, some notation before I, I, I can go. And uh, so, so the over bar is going to be a, it's going to represent a vertical average use velocity x position so we're going to have a domain that can be as general as you want you can cover the whole plane or can be uh, limited by a boundary and we're going to have these densities raw they are no density but density in the sense that you go and take the an, a, an integral over over a, a region of fluid that is tra transported by the flow, and this is constant. So have that in mind. And um, then there's gonna be a, a function of, 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 of these densities, and the density is divided by rho one. Doesn't really matter what it means right now, but have that in mind. So these are, uh, these rho tildes are gonna be the rows divided by rho one. And we haven't imposed some, some condition on the, on the row tildes along the boundaries. So the boundaries are gonna be iso row tilde. Uh, I mean, the row tilde is gonna be constant around the, uh, the uh, along the boundary, if there is a boundary. Uh, then we have the uh, momentum. You can call this a momentum, absolute momentum, this F. If you take the curl of F and just keep the vertical component, you get the, uh, Curious parameter. We're going to assume that dynamics is, happens on, on a beta plane. Uh, you can call this an absolute momentum per unit mass and length. Um, and we have this quantity here. It should be familiar for you if you identify row one with H, the potential vorticity. Uh, this can be shown to be actually the average in the vertical of your tells potential vorticity in a model with a full uh, stratification. Okay, so this is what we have. So the model that, uh, that I'm proposing is the one that I'm showing you. So you're gonna have a momentum type of equation and equations for uh, conserved quantities. Okay, this object here is, is defined in this equation here. So we have, it has the advection of the quantity B by, by A, A is gonna be the velocity the stretching component of that and the expansion. Uh, if you use continuity of row one, we can write this M equation into a more familiar form. It's a momentum equation. And I mean, it's familiar to us involved in, in ocean dynamics. I mean, this is the shallow water equation with a generalized pressure gradient force in here. This conservation equation is just a Reynolds theorem for the row, uh, for the row quantities. We have to distinguish between the row quantities and the row tilde quantities in the sense that the row quantities are, are conserved and the row tildes are transported. Uh, this is a material derivative. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna specify what I mean by 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 the, by these things. So I in homogeneous layer models with no vertical variation for the velocity, but with variation for for density. But that comes comes later, uh, and the possibility of deviation to that that makes it uh, more freedom in 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 when we apply this this type of uh, of modeling. Uh, so the first thing is that um, um, is the uh, what we call the Euler Poincaré variation formulation of a model. Um, so we have this this quantity you get to take k subtract from it phi multiply it around and integrate over a fixed domain. That thing is a function of time and most, but it depends on on u bar and the rows. So that is a function. And what I write in here are the functional derivatives of this functional, kind of a partial derivatives of a function. Okay, so we grab all this and we put together and you get that the M equation takes this form. So this suggests the Euler Poincare variation formulation for the model. And that is good to have. And what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean that uh, if you integrate that quantity L over time and you extremize this, uh, constraint to variations that take this form, you get the the the, the equations of motion. Uh, that is an Euler Poincaré variational uh, or, um, principle. L is a Lagrangian, k and phi and phi can be interpreted as kinetic and potential energy densities. Um, the Euler Poincaré uh, formulation belongs to a much uh, general construction that has been written in the abstract language of diffeomorphism that Holm, Marsden, and Ratu, uh, the idea of imposing these constraints that lead directly to equations of motion in, in Eulerian variables was introduced in the fluid dynamic context by Newcomb in 1962. But it's actually, uh, for finite dimensions, these type of constraints already appear in a, in a, in a work by Henri Poincaré in, in 19... O one, this object here they're going to find uh, many times along the talk is, is a commutator of vector fields, and in the previous talk I had a dagger in here, meaning that the dagger operator is actually a dual to this object. It's a dead joint of this object uh, relative to uh, an L two uh, inner product. I mean, it's the integral over the domain of the scalar product. Of, of M with, with, the, with this bracket. And uh, there are boundary terms that you can bring, uh, form this, this, uh, this uh, dual operator to the bracket. Okay. An important thing is that you can rearrange the equation by dividing by row one, use continuity and put it in, in this form to get immediately a, a, a Kelvin circulation theorem. So gamma is a circulation of this quantity that happens to be this uh, momentum per unit mass along a, a fluid loop. And it's not conserved because of the misalignment of this, of the gradient of these two quantities in here. Uh, exceptions for that are the case when you have only one density, rho one, or when the system is initialized in the rho tilde constant subspace. Uh, also, if you replace this thing, which is a fluid loop, by a fixed uh, boundary, a fixed curve, I mean the boundary of a, of, of a, a solid boundary of the domain, the integral of, 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 of u is constant thanks to the assumption that the, that the boundary, in case that you have a boundary, is uh, iso rho tilde. So you have freedom of imposing some boundary condition and uh, and this freedom, I mean, it's good to have circulation conserved along these boundaries. So we impose uh, that condition along the boundaries. Uh, I'm learning, okay, via the Stokes theorem, uh, you get you can get to have the uh, the potential vorticity in there, and you see the potential vorticity is not conserved either, unless the the cases that I just mentioned. Um, uh, hold. Uh, this is important in, in, in the appearance of these small scales in the simulations that I just described. Uh, there is a more deeper um, uh, interpretation of the Kelvin circulation theorem. Though I'm going to go over the details, but it, 
gives you a way of going from the Lagrangian description of fluid motion to the Eulerian description of the fluid motion, where we're going to be working on. Uh, for those um, with some knowledge of, 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 of uh, Hamiltonian dynamics, this is a, it's a quite uh, relevant quantity. We call it a, a momentum map. Uh, and, and the reason that we have this um, uh, concept of motion is associated with the, uh, with the symmetry that there is in the system under, under relabeling uh, fuel particles. So the velocities and this rho don't change if we arbitrarily change the, uh, the assigned um, labels to fluid particles. Okay, so we, we were on this side, on the Lagrangian side of the description. I took this uh, cartoon from Darl Holmes' lecture notes. This is the framework for studying the, the geometric mechanics framework for understanding dynamics. So we're on the Lagrangian side and we can go to the Hamiltonian side by a Lagrange, uh, um, uh, by a Lagrange transform. And this is what I'm doing here. So it, this build, it boils down to writing an energy uh, somehow. Okay, there's a new function on here that depends rather than u on m, and you can take variational derivatives and you can write the equations of motion like this. And this suggests a generalized Hamiltonian structure for the for for the IL for, for the for the generalized model that I'm that I'm describing here. Uh, the idea of a generalized Hamiltonian uh, uh, formulation of fluid dynamics was, to the best of my knowledge, introduced by Morrison and Greeny in, in 1980. Uh, so what we have in there, that we can write the equations of motion in this way, but well, there is this operator here that we call it a Poisson bracket. This thing here is, is a Poisson operator. The Poisson bracket has to be... Um, uh, anti-symmetric, and it has to satisfy this, this uh, identity. It's a Jacobi identity. So, uh, and this is the most uh, difficult, um, give, given a model in order to decide whether it is Hamiltonian in this sense, you have to prove this. And this is hard part in here. For the model that we have, we know that it's Hamiltonian with this Poisson operator that have this uh, Poisson bracket, and this paper, I, I make explicit the, uh, the proof of the, of the Jacobi identity. Uh, for some mathematicians, it can be a triviality, uh, um, but it's not actually so in my mind. And uh, one thing that facilitates the, the proof of a Jacobi identity is the fact that uh, these, these brackets are, are effectively linear in, in the states variables. These are the state variables. This is probably the, uh, the, uh, the dynamics. H, which is the energy, is the Hamiltonian in, of the system in here. There's more things to say here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand on this. One, just one thing that is important is when you're, where when dealing with these things, there are boundary terms that, that has to cancel. Uh, that is fine when the domain covers the whole plane, but when you have solid boundaries, you limit the, the, the class of, uh, of functionals that are admitted for the formulation. Uh, and still today, the, uh, the class of admissible functions has not been able to, to expand as, as, as much as possible. There's room for, for, for further uh, work in, in, in there. Um, then there are conservation laws, and these are related to symmet explicit symmetries of a system. We have the energy related to time symmetry, momentum, zonal momentum related to symmetry in the zonal uh, direction. You need to have a zonal channel for this quantity to be conserved. Or if you are on an F plane, you can have a, a rotational, I mean, angular momentum uh, conserved, and that's related to rotational symmetry. These things are important for the duration, for instance, of a uh, of um, uh, stability theorems. But there's a more fundamental structure in there are, are, are certain um, um, conserved quantities that we call in Cassimus that form the, uh, the uh, kernel of the Poisson operator. I mean, this commute with any, with any functional in the Poisson bracket, 
that are conserved. And these are not related to explicit symmetries of a, sym of, of a system, but they are related to symmetries lost in the reduction from the Lagrangian description to the earlier description. Depending on the value of, of, of alpha, we're gonna have uh, casimers that they, they, they take different forms, okay? If alpha is equal to minus one, we're gonna tell you what that means. It's gonna be an integral of a function of a vorticity. Uh, uh, but vorticity uh, appears, still appears when alpha is, is larger than one, but not in a way that, uh, then not in, a, in an arbitrary way, but most linearly. And that has consequences for the, um, of the power of, the, of these structures or, or the ability of these structures to constrain the system. And the most um, uh, uh, useful, perhaps, theorems of stability come when you have an arbitrary function of, of vorticity. Okay, so that said, let me go into, into explain you why these are uh, a family of thermal models. Okay, we are thinking on, 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 a, on, a, on a fluid layer that floats atop of a, of a very large, uh, very thick fluid layer that is, uh, that is um, addressed. So I'm thinking of the upper ocean, okay? H is, is, is the thickness of, of a layer. HR is gonna be a reference layer. Uh, then we have the buoyancy, it's an important quantity. You hear the difference between the density and the layer and, 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 and the density below. Uh, that it, you know, the, you know, the layer is inactive. Uh, the reference uh, buoyancy, which is just buoyant to jump in the reference state. We have a uh, brown by silent frequency, which in the reference state is going to assume to be constant. We can measure the stratification by this quantity here. And when this is small, we have two distinguished um, uh, scales. R, which is the first Berkeley mode or the external Rossby radius of the formation. And uh, the square root of S times R is going to be the first uh, um, internal, uh, the internal radius of the formation is going to be actually the second uh, uh, working mode ref, uh, Rossi radius of the formation. And instead of using Z as a vertical coordinate, you use sigma. And it was introduced by Pedro Rip and, um, to, to, for taking averages. It's, so we just take anywhere from minus one to one instead of going from minus H to zero. The, the top is a horizontally rigid uh, boundary. So, okay, so we identify row one with H. Uh, this is a situation you have alpha equals mean one. It's just the uh, shallow water equation. Okay, I call it plus because in my formulation, I have this object in here, which is not just the, the pressure gradient that would be like that if it just take phi with this particular um, form. Um, the possibilities, I don't know, that introduction of, 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 of pressure forcing like this, uh, with, with that to the model, I mean, to investigate is, uh, I mean, I mean, you can investigate um, by writing phi, like the part that leads to the actual pressure gradient by some arbitrary function of H, so you can investigate some forcing uh, dynamics, force dynamics, and an isothermal mixed layer dynamics, if you want to, like in a Hamiltonian context, in the sense that the system in Hamiltonian, it has all these geometric properties that I, that I talked about. So this is just shallow water, alpha equals minus one with these associations. Next is the IL0 class of models. So we have in here, we add an equation of motion for the, for the vertical average of a buoyancy. We have something familiar to most of us, shallow water plus uh, an equation for buoyancy in there uh, with a particular uh, pressure gradient force, which can be something different than just the vertical average of, 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 the, uh, of the pressure gradient as the IL0 was originally uh, devised and, and which permits investigation of, in this case, thermal mixed layer dynamics in a conservative setting, because this system has all these nice geometric properties that I talked about. An important thing, and this is actually what motivated my, my interest in this, is that this system in here, when you take, when you set alpha, uh, phi to this particular form, is a particular case 
of um, Morrison and Green in 1980s uh, system, the limit of that system. So, and it was uh, not known till present. And, uh, and that simplifies things a lot because you don't need to, uh, I mean, if you want to demonstrate Hamiltonian structure or a model, you have to uh, explicitly work out the, uh, the Jacobi identity for the system because it has been already done by Mar Mar Morrison and Greeny in 1980. Paul Deller showed that the system that can be put in, in, in Lipan's Hamiltonian form, something that I showed before, but he did not make the connection. So this is actually something some, something uh, new. Uh, but we can complicate things more. So we can add some vertical variation in the, uh, in the system. We can allow the buoyancy to vary in the vertical. So this is a new part. We have an additional uh, equation in here. And this system for some special choice of phi one was used by Schoff and Kane and to study El Nino dynamics. And I'm, I'm calling this system the IL01 because we have a linear variation for the buoyancy in the vertical, but no variation for the velocity. Adding shear in the, in the velocity is not trivial because the Hamiltonian structure is not so simple to, to maintain. Um, the important addition of the IL01 one with respect to the IL00, IL0, is that we can model a uh, process like uh, 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 mixed layer recertification due to baroclinic instability. So it expands the, the, the possibilities of IL0. Uh, I, I can show that uh, this is well, well defined, provided some, some, some things uh, hold in the sense that you can obtain this equation by suitable vertical averages of, of, the, uh, of, of, of the full system with some uh, upon uh, setting some ansatz to the, uh, to the buoyancy. Uh, and we can generalize the situation to, to an arbitrary degree of polynomial variation in the vertical. So that leads to the IL0 alpha, okay? Uh, so let me go and, and show you some effects of adding the certification. To, to, to see that most cleanly, you want to work on, on, the, on the low frequency, slow manifold of the system, making a quasi geostrophic approximations, Rossby radius you have to introduce here and, and, and make an, an expansion about the reference frame, uh, reference state with no motion. Uh, small perturbations of, of the order of the order of a proxy uh, number, and what we have in here is that we have implicit vertical shear that is quadratic in this system. Okay, that's the uh, why we have this uh, psi sigma squares in here. So, so we have a, a stream function that has implicit linear and also vertical shear in there. So this leads to these e equations of motion that have a, a different uh, Hamiltonian structure, but it's, I mean, well-defined and has all the nice properties I wanted to have in order to produce type of simulation that I'm showing here. So I'm going to compare a simulation uh, uh, based on the IL-0 and the IL-01 and the new things that the IL-01 is adding. So we have in the IL-0, the small scales are starting to, to develop in here and everywhere like in, in this scale of Helmholtz things. And, and the addition of certification is like a dumping the production of those small scales. And I have a, why that is happening. And it's, uh, it has to be related to the fact that the IL-01 has a high weight number cutoff of instability, something that IL-0 is lacking. Home is uh, arguing that the, the absence of a numerous energy cascade in the IL-0 is related to the fact that you have circulation production, that circulation is conserved, but it's been produced. We have the same situation in the IL-01, but uh, there must be something else going on here that needs more, more, more thinking. Okay, so quickly, five, 10 minutes that I have uh, uh, to go on application to Caribbean Edis. I have these people collaborating in this project, this, this uh, 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 paper that's it's been submitted to physical fluids. 
supported by CIMAS in here, uh, Fernando Andrade from Otesur, from Ecosur in Mérida, is the lead author, Gustavo Boni, Cross Street, uh, Joaquín Tuñani, Josefina Odazcuaga, professor of uh, oceanography in, in the department. Uh, she didn't notice, but she has sargassum in the background, and this is sargassum work. Daniel Karash, our colleague from Germany, is the owner of the Coherent Structures Toolbox that we have, that Fernando has mastered and, and, and applied in, in this little project. And here, what we have? So we have a Caribbean Sea, we have uh, a special Caribbean eddies. One of them is in here. Fernando has called it Kukul Khan for the shape it takes when it interacts with topography and leads to these filaments. This thing is born out of incorrigent fluid. See, these boundaries are uh, resist stretching. We have a theory for that. Uh, this is a generalized scheme to right? but I mean, the important thing is that this, these are uh, observing dependent assessments of the presence of a vortex in here. And over this six months or more period of time, the vortex remained very coherent since that the boundary did not stretch. Um, why it was formed out of incoherent water is, uh, is, it's a problem that is still unanswered in my mind. Uh, we're not going into that. Uh, what I'm going to do point out is that uh, these vortices, we know we have a theory for that, uh, hold uh, attractors for elastic networks of inertial uh, particles. Inertial particles are not just fluid particles, but are particles that have buoyancy and, uh, and fine size. And they are connected by elastics. Uh, springs, I mean, and that is a mathematical uh, model for sargassum mat mats. So the idea is can capture sargassum and they can translate them. And for some reason, they, they get unstabilized and they spread sargassum over the coasts of uh, uh, Central America uh, and North America too. Where well, I don't know. Okay, so um, one thing to have in mind is that these vortices are known to be surface intensified. So in principle, by theory, they should be able to bypass this topographic object quite easily. Uh, and we proposed a, a, a reason why they, they, they get uh, unstable, uh, they, they become unstable. Okay, evidence for Kuku can spread in sargassum, it captures sargassum here according to the theory, interact with topography and spreads sargassum over the coast. There are, this is one example where in this paper we have a uh, uh, report uh, situations like this uh, that happened many times during the, uh, at least 2011 to now, where the uh, sargassum inundation has, uh, were first reported. Uh, we use an altimetry to detect these vortices, okay? So we propose a, a little model for that. I emphasize on this part because this is the subject of, 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 um, of this talk. So we propose an IL0 IGL QG model. So we have, an, we have two layers, which uh, a thin layer on top of, 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 of a thin, of, 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 of fine depth layer, which is homogeneous. The, the, the one atop has a density varying laterally and uh, we're gonna, and we allow topography. So we have a, a topographic beta plane and, uh, and this is on, on, on the beta plane, the whole thing. Um, okay, uh, so we're gonna initialize the system with, with, with a vortex type structure and we see what, what, what happens. Before that, I mean, the system has all these nice properties and it, it also has unique solutions uh, provided they, they exist. I'm not getting into that. But uh, uh, so this justifies the use of, of, of this model. Uh, and this is what happens. So consistent with, with theory, uh, Glenn Fleur, Fleur was involved uh, on, on this thing. So if we make the surface layer homogeneous in density, I mean, the vortex bypasses the topography, this isobats, I mean, the depth is uh, decreasing to the left, uh, are bypassed quite easily. But if you put some thermal structure in the upper layer, so we, it becomes 
and stable, kind of consistent with the observation. So we are arguing that uh, it is a uh, thermal instability mediated by, by topography that is controlling the, uh, the spreading of, 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 of the sargassum, of these producing these waves of sargassum that arrive to the, to the coasts of, uh, Medi uh, of Yucatan and also uh, solar than that. Um, so, so this is it. So I have uh, some conclusions here. So I, I introduced this family of shallow water models with generalized thermodynamics. Uh, I can have buoyancy depending in Z up to an arbitrary degree. Um, uh, so this extends the, sh the thermal shallow water model, RIPA model of IL0 uh, by allowing possibly uh, forcing, but in, in a conservative setting. And uh, we can study uh, stratified approach and thermodynamics with that. Uh, well, the models are Euler, Poincaré, and Lee Poisson. Uh, this is an important thing for me and, and, and for some people too, that the IL0 is a particular case of the Morrison and Greeny system. Things to do, things to do. So why the IL-01 uh, halts the, uh, the filamentation in the IL-0 is something that I believe how, how to do it. It could be done quickly, but we need to run a, a stability, a linear stability dance for that. Uh, but that's something to be done. Uh, this is a much more ambitious um, goal. In a, incorporate vertical shear in a geometry preserving manner in a model. Uh, so there's a model there developed by RIPA. This is actually a, a RIPA model that is called IL1 or in our notation IL11. It has linear variation of buoyancy in the vertical and also in the velocity. I don't know if it is Hamiltonian. It might be. Uh, I've been working on this for a year now, so I might, be, I might know how, to, how to, to actually see if the system is Hamiltonian or not now. And there are more fundamental things to do, uh, like this Kelvin no, no order circulation theorem. Things work fine for shallow water. When you put uh, thermal structure in the air, there are terms that we still need to understand what they mean. Uh, the issue of a chain rule and boundary terms is still open in my mind. Uh, this is interesting, the numerical implementation of geometry, uh, geometry preserving numerical implementation. Okay, there's been a lot of progress in, in, in developing numerical codes that preserve the, uh, the Hamiltonian structure or the, or the uh, uh, in, 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 in the, in, of a system. So it'd be nice to see if, if something can be developed for this class of, 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 of systems. Um, and, and the idea of, of using the system to investigate um, parameterization, parameterization uh, development, I mean, subgrade parameterization in a way that is consistent with the, um, with the, uh, with the Hamiltonian structure. Oh, there's a way to, to preserve the, um, the Lipposon structure of a model uh, that was proposed by Daryl Holm. And that is something that I find uh, of interest and I hope to, to be looking at that uh, soon. So thank you, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. If someone has a question, activate your camera and microphone. Lucla Rodrigo is asking. Yes. Dale, Rodrigo. Yeah, me escucha? Hello. You. So, Javier, thank you very much. That was very interesting. Um, I was, can you go back to the slide where, the, uh, where you show the eddy uh, breaking up with a sargasso? That one, yeah, right there. Yes, that one. So right where it breaks up and it it, it separates in, 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 well, yeah, two directions. Um, next to the shelf of Honduras and Nicaragua, I think that's what's over there. There's um, there's some, there's um, 
there's a CLCS, a climatological Lagrangian coherence structure barrier that is very persistent in every month of the year. Mm. So what I was wondering is, have you looked at? So it seems you need some density variations there to for 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 your hypotheses to work. I'm wondering if you looked at the density in that area uh, that might uh, support your theory, because perhaps there's some connection to um, perhaps there's a connection between the dynamics and CLCS there that could be looked into. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I mean the whole the whole point of adding. I mean. I mean, we know that the, uh, the, the, the ocean is not isothermal. So this is, I mean, we, 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 so we model so this, this a... thing within, uh, minimally. So the minimal model that you can propose is something of the type that I just uh, talked about. I mean, we can add... So the, so the density variation is in the vertical then? No, 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 no. The, the density variation is on the horizontal in this okay, case. Okay. So okay. only have density varying in the horizontal. And an important thing is, I mean, the, so the, I mean, this is very shallow. This is narrow. I mean, I, yes. I do not expect the vortex actually to be able to travel like this across this thing. But you see that the, the vortex starts to uh, to get unstable before you, you reach yes. the That's true. Uh, yeah. track in here. So in here, I mean, you still can model this as a uh, gentle slope, you know, and that is already enough for a thermal vortex to get unstable yeah so that's probably before the the transport barrier that i'm looking at yeah it's a minimal contribution to resolving this 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 anopastal but yeah it's kind of possible because i mean for for homogeneous vortices i mean there's theory supporting the idea that it should bypass this uh topographic slope i mean uh, pretty easily okay uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because they are shallow, not for vertical vortices. Vertical vortices feel the the action of the, of the topography pretty quickly, but vertical but signals enter. should bypass this thing. You, you can do some some uh, uh, get some analytical results in, in in some cases, not in the case that I showed, because you cannot decouple the the uh, the bar clinic from vertical mode in this case. If it is concentrated, you have just a reach. It's a narrow reach. You can decompose on the right, on the left, separate bar clinic and bar and bar talk mode. So you can do some stuff, and this is what Glenn Fleur has done, and he showed that bar clinic board the signals propagate pretty, pretty pretty easily. Very interesting. Thank you, Javier. Any further questions or comments? Maybe not. Then thank you again for the nice presentation. Thank you all for coming. Come again on Friday when we will have three student seminars. And then next Wednesday, we will have Mr. Cheng Fei Hei of ATM giving another presentation like this. Not exactly like this, but another Wednesday presentation. So thank you and uh, goodbye. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Bye.